Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Candice and I'm going to be doing a book review of the book Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Um, I've never done a book, re book review before so my review is going to be broken down into different topics. Uh, the first topic is going to be plot summary. The second topic is going to be characterization. The third topic is going to be pacing um, and I'm also going to throw in uh, kind of talking about the romance and uh, the la last thing will be writing style and then I will finish up with just sort of final thoughts and that sort of thing. Um, so let's get started. Gods of Jade and Shadow is about um, a girl, Cassiopeia, who is forced to live with her horrible relatives after her father dies. Her mother married outside of her class into a lowered class and so her mother's side of the family really looks down upon both of them and they're sort of forced to be maids within the household and they basically both get treated like crap. And while her mother is content to just sort of endure and be grateful that she has a place to stay at all, um, Cassiopeia is not so content and she tends to do what's asked of her but she adds a little bit of sass to it and then one day when her father or when her grandfather and her family go on a trip that she's been denied from going on she finds a key to a chest that her grandfather usually protects all the time but this day he forgot it and she opens that chest and inside are a bunch of bones which form into the Mayan god of death, Hun Kame. Um, and Hun Kame essentially demands that Cassiopeia help him reclaim his throne to the Mayan underworld um, and take it back from his treacherous brother, Vukub Kame. Cassiopeia has to help him because while she was opening the chest, she got a bone spur stuck into her hand and that bone spur is slowly draining away her life um, in order to maintain the corporeal form of Hun Kame. And it's simultaneously slowly turning Hun Kame mortal. So they go on this grand adventure to reclaim his throne. Moving on to characterization, there are four main player characters uh, in this book. Um, the first one is Cassiopeia, our main character. She's really feisty and willing to stick up for herself. Um, she doesn't accept disrespect even though she may be from a lower class than her family. Um, and so she's, you know, quick to add sass or a little back talking when she's doing chores and that extends to when she's serving the god Hunkame. Um, that's the part that I really related to with Cassiopeia. Um, I'm the kind of person who expects respect and of course I will be respectful to you but if you're not respectful to me even if you are like my superior in some way um, it's I'm the kind of person who will defend myself. Uh, so I really related uh, to Cassiopeia in that way. The next character is Hunkame, the god that Cassiopeia is serving. Um, he definitely has an interesting arc which is really it's really enjoyable to discover throughout the book. He sort of starts out as this really aloof commanding god because that's how he is and that's what he expects as a god um, as an immortal and then that sort of develops over the course of the book. Um, the third character is Vukub Kame um, I'm probably butchering all these names, so forgive me, but uh, Vukub Kame is his brother who stole the throne. Um, and while Hun Kame is commanding and aloof, but he can be kind, Vukub Kame expects total uh, devotion, total debasement from the mortals who encounter him and the people of the underworld. Um, and then the last character uh, that sort of plays a big role is Martine, uh, who is Cassiopeia's um, bully of a cousin, and he sort of gets roped into the plot as well. Um, overall, I thought that Moreno Garcia's uh, characterization was really well done. I think you get a really good sense of who each character is, what their traits are, and um, especially for the super main characters, there's a good character arc for them throughout the 
novel. Um, the only sort of nitpicks that I have are um, I would have liked Cassiopeia to have more of an re initial reaction when she's sort of when the call to action comes and she's about to go on this adventure, um, she's just sort of like, okay. Um, and I get that she's desperate for adventure, but I think I would have liked a little bit more of like, oh, what, you're a god, uh, kind of reaction. Um, and then Martin, uh, he definitely has a very distinct character, but I think that it was a little bit um, shallow considering that he plays kind of a big part. So I would have liked to see more nuance to Martin's character. Um, so that's how I feel about the characterization. Moving on to pacing and romance. The pacing of this book is great. It's very quick. It was a super quick read. I think I read it in just a couple days, um, which is really fast for me. It, that, it maintains that pacing for the whole book. Like there's not really a part where it super slows down and um, it drags at any point. It's not like that. It's just super boom, boom, boom. Um, very fast and but it doesn't it also doesn't feel too fast most of the time I do wish that it would have spent maybe a little bit more time in certain scenes scenes that I think would have been that were important to Cassiopeia or Hunkame um, but if you're looking for a really quick read um, this is definitely the book for you um, there's also a romance in this book, uh, and that's not a spoiler because if you read the back of the book, you're going to know that in immediately. Um, you know, as soon as a book says something like, you know, the mysterious and alluring, uh, God, you, you know, there's going to be a romance. Um, I really liked this romance and that's saying something because I'm very picky with the romances in my literature. Um, it's a slow burn romance. It's not insta love, um, which I hate by the way. Um, and there is hesitation to that love, um, which sometimes gets on my nerves, not in this book, but in general. Um, I don't like it when characters are in love, but they are really resisting it when there's no reason for them to resist it. But in this book, it makes sense. Like he's a god that would be weird and also Cassiopeia it's he's like the first person who's ever been nice to her besides her mother and her father so it makes sense that she's a little bit hesitant about these things that she's feeling um and so the love that develops definitely feels earned which is what I look for in a romance um so yeah I think it it's a very positive romance overall talking about writing style overall I really enjoyed the writing style of Gods of Jade and Shadow it's very like I said it's fast-paced it the best parts are when she's talking about the Mayan mythology she does a really good job of describing that mythology um, when it comes up and she makes it feel really otherworldly and very creepy where it's appropriate and um, I thought that was really great. Um, it's a very colorful book in terms of its descriptions and um, you really get a sense of place in everywhere that they go which I really appreciate. As I said before I kind of wish that it would have spent a little bit more time in certain scenes. I do wish that um, some things have been described more or that we had gotten a little bit more insight into uh, what was going on around them. Also the book is only, it's not very long, it's um, like over, just between 300 and 400 pages so it, I think it could have taken that time to slow down a little bit and um, indulge the reader in a little bit more description and it wouldn't have been too long. The other thing that was a little bit of a issue for me was I felt that there's a lot of telling and not showing in terms of what the characters are feeling and like their internal thoughts and things. It just straight up comes out and tells you and I would have liked that to be shown more through their actions or um, their dialogue than just it telling you in the, in the paragraph what they're feeling. Um, but I do think that that was a stylistic choice as opposed to a necessarily a weakness from the author. I think that it's supposed to feel like a fairy tale that maybe your grandmother would have told you like at your bedside and a lot of times that kind of 
fairy tale just straight up comes out and tells you what the characters are feeling so I think that's what what the intention was but for me personally I would have liked it to be a little bit more subtle I guess um overall though I really liked this book I gave it four out of five stars um the lack of a fifth star is mostly from what I just talked about regarding the writing style um but the my favorite parts of the Mayan mythology was really interesting the way she describes it feels it makes it feel really real um it definitely made me want to learn more about Mayan mythology and about Mexican history in general um it's also great to have um uh Latina centered book um, that was really cool for me to sort of diversify the things that I'm reading um, so yeah overall I really enjoyed this book and I hope you give it a try um, I hope this review wasn't too terrible to get through and I hope you have a great day thanks bye